Um, several of you have raised uh, concerns with me about um, either not feeling comfortable with using Photoshop or not wanting to spend time using um, photo editing software for your narrative project. So I thought that what I might do is just take a few minutes of your time and go through some images um, from some contemporary conceptual photographers and kind of dissect a few images so that you can see sort of what visual effects you can get without really having to spend time um, you know playing playing with digital technology. Um, as I mentioned in the first little video I sent out um, in order to do this successfully, the best thing to do is kind of think in really, really basic elements of photography. And I'm, I'm talking like light and shadow basic. Um, think about the tools that you already know and how you can use them to kind of create this sort of unreal image um, with just, you know, just your eyes and your hands and your camera. So let me just open this up here. Here we go. Um, this is a lecture that I used to give when we were um, in person with this class. And so I've kind of pared it down. Um, and I just want to run through it and kind of just take a look at some work with you. The first artist we're going to look at is a fellow by the name of Keith Carter. He's a contemporary artist. Um, and he has been called uh, both poet of the century and a transcendental realist. And with his images, what he tries to do is to find hidden meanings in the real world. So if you look at his photos, and I'm just going to scroll through some before I sort of stop and talk about one, you can see that that he's basing these these images on sort of real world situations, right? This, for instance, is a little girl kind of looking at an airplane that seems to be docked in some kind of airstrip. I mean, these are this is not made up imagery. This is something that he's probably shooting that exists out in the real world. But if you pay close attention, you can really see that first and foremost, you notice the real high contrast between the blacks and the whites in the image. And you can see that he's really paid attention to depth of field, um, what's in focus versus what's out of focus. He's kind of honed in on this little person as, as, as our focal point and everything else is sort of blurred out in a way that creates a really sort of dreamlike um, supporting landscape. So this is a situation where um, it's based on, you know, something that exists out in the real world, but it's, it's been, he has, he as the artist has sort of manipulated it in such a way that it seems dreamlike or not quite real or not something that's, that's been shot straight up as it is in the landscape. Um, so you could do something like this, you know, really easily, just be really careful of depth of field and, you know, work in black and white or monochrome and see what kind of contrast you can get. Here's another one, you know, this is, I love this image, it's, um, it's sort of tilted off balance, you know, the, the, ca the camera angle itself um, looks like we're looking down a train platform because it's in grayscale in black and white, there's just a really high contrast between the light um, that's outside this tunnel space here and the darkness of the tunnel space itself. And so what that does is it kind of takes our eye to that light and smack in the middle of it is the silhouette of this man um, in an overcoat. And again, because he's really paid close attention to his depth of field, you see this top portion here in really crisp focus but everything else kind of just washes away into um, into this sort of blurred foreground. So that really kind of upends our, our visual expectations and makes something really, really compelling and also really, really uneasy. If you look at sort of the way he's composed this image right here, um, to me anyway, it feels like the walls are sort of closing in on the tunnel and it's a really, really anxious, um, anxious photograph. Here's some more. This is just, you know, it's it's a child playing with a bubble, but again, because he's kind of caught the reflection here, the world looks upside down. Um, 
using the idea of reflection is a really kind of fun thing to do. You know, if you have a mirror or pool of water in a dark background or something like that, you can get all sorts of really, really interesting effects, you know, again, without having to use Photoshop. This is another one where depth of field and focus is just really, really important. Again, this looks like it could be based in some real, you know, real setup. It's a couch, a woman, a fish, a fish bowl. Um, but he's presented to it, presented it to us in such a way that it, it, it doesn't seem real. You know, it seems dreamy, dreamlike. Um, and that's the whole goal with narrative imagery. You know, it's just not quite real. See, there's more. I love this one too. But just simple objects, and then this is, I think he's a really, really good example of what I mean by just pairing, pairing this down to really, really basic elements. The things that work the most powerfully in his images are the contrast between lights and darks, highlights and shadows, and also the way he plays with um, blurs, and that's just a function of how he uses his depth of field and what he keeps in focus versus what he lets go out of focus. I love this, the sort of mottled light coming through the trees. This was clearly taken um, on some kind of bright day or with a bright light source coming through these, these trees, but again, shot in such a way that it just looks really dreamy, really kind of abstracted and just sort of beautiful. So I'll let you just, we'll just kind of go through here. Just see a couple of these. Again, this is all, I love this one. It seems so anxious to me. It's like a film noir image, but it's just a really well-lit stairwell um, in, a, in a space that's otherwise dark. You know, that's so easy to reproduce. Just go into your, your dorm stairwell, um, see if you can cut the lights and have spotlight, and you get all kinds of crazy effects here. So this is what I mean. Think, think, think simple, light, dark. We'll just kind of wind him up here. A second group of artists, this is a husband and wife pair out of Oakland, California. They call themselves the Flighting, Fighting Fish Studio, and they are Arlo Kio Valera and Hyung Kim. And their strategy, they work together, and what they do is they create little scenes using kind of these miniature cloth figures here. And so what they do is they build these little, almost like little dioramas, and then just shoot them. So what you see here, again, it's just basic elements here. Lights, darks, depth of field, what's in focus versus what's out of focus. Where the manipulation comes in is them actually making these little characters. So these are little handmade knit dolls that they stage and then, and then photograph. So you could think along, along those lines too. This is just like, this looks like an elevator that's really uncomfortable with, you know, people not looking at each other or talking to each other. Um, but what it is, probably a little, if you look at it, you see corrugated cardboard. This is probably just like a little shoebox diorama, you know, like you may have made in the second grade or something like that. Um, the little skylight so that it allows the light to come in just so, and then they, and then they shoot it. So this is another thing, another way you could work. But, uh, you know, again, light and, and dark is so, so, so important. And this is where the experimentation comes in, you know. So I always harp at you about taking a lot of pictures. But this is why. This is why you do it. So you can, you know, try different ways of lighting. Try to see how much contrast you can get between your lights and your darks. Um, where are you going to put your light source so that you get an effect like this? You know, this is stuff you have to do a couple of different times until you get it right. So that's why, you know, you have to take several um, pictures. Just kind of go through here. Again, these are all like little dolls that they make. This artist I really like, um, Kim Kiever. She's another contemporary artist, and she calls her practice painting in water. And so what she does, this is just a, a, a glimpse into how she does what she does. She uses big, um, large-scale fish tanks and different colored inks um, or, you know, pigmented liquids in various viscosities. And she 
kind of drops these thick liquids into this big tank and then just um, shoots them with various different lights. But you get really, really cool effects like this. This is just like um, viscous goo poured into water. And it looks almost, you know, almost like a landscape, otherworldly landscape here. It's just a fish tank in different colored inks, a varying thickness with lights behind them. See? It just looks almost like Jurassic Park or like an alien planet or something like that. So think about that. I think photographing water is always a really, really cool thing to do. Um, and if you're stuck for ideas and you just want to sort of start playing this way, that works too. It's kind of a way to get yourself going. Um, see, that looks like a burning landscape, but it's really just like a little little fish tank um, plant life here, and then all these like colored colored inks with a, a light source here. And she's she's filming through the tank, so I think this stuff is really cool. And then another another sort of studio shot. So I don't expect you to go to this crazy um, great length to take to take your pictures, but this is just this gives you a sense that what she's doing here is completely analog. You know, she's not she's not doing this digitally. She's not painting digitally. She's just dropping some some paint and some pigmented um, goo into a fish tank and taking a picture of it. So that's pretty simple. Um, now I'm going to switch gears, and the, the last two artists I want to show you kind of deal in portraits, but they're sort of narrative portraits. Um, this woman, Angelique, Angelica uh, Rinhofer, she's contemporary, and um, she likes to take, quote, portraits that combine facts, beauty, and irony in a Renaissance style. Um, so here we are. They look like this. You know, just these look almost like. Um, Renaissance paintings, you know, portraits that um, rich merchants or nobility would commission um, people like Johannes Vermeer and all those guys to, to do for them. But they're, you know, these are super contemporary. So this is like maybe your roommate dressed up in ornate costumed and shot very starkly in, the, in a manner of classical, um, classical painting. Again, light is so, so, so important. You know, we've got a dark background and just that, and we call this the Rembrandt angle of light, just one light source on at a 45 degree angle. And you just, it's, you know, you just get this like really classical um, composition. So you could think in terms of this, if you want to recruit a friend and kind of do a modern play on something like this, um, you certainly could. But then you have to be really mindful of how well you're using those simple elements, light, um, especially angle of lighting, uh, facial expression, body language. This is certainly a fair game, this, this way of working. I love these. See, this is in, this is even a modern context. You know, I'm guessing this is sort of a comment on maybe plastic surgery or something like that. You have got this team of of medical professionals and this sort of woman presented in the in a kind of a traditional pieta pose. Love it. But again, lighting, it's almost theatrical lighting, and that becomes really important if you if you work this way. She's using that kind of um, dead on perspective but everything is, is put together just so so it works in a really narrative way the last artist i want to show you is cindy sherman she's also a contemporary um contemporary photographer she's been around a long time since the since the late 60s and 70s and she deals primarily in stereotypes of women in media so her whole work um is kind of called complete untitled film stills and as you can see here, she takes, these are all self-portraits, so this is the artist herself, but she will dress up um, kind of in in the guise of a certain sort of female stereotype. In this case, it's like the, the femme fatale in a noir um, in a noir film, and the one before this was maybe like the tragic country music star, you know, from like the 70s. It's just like the innocent girl um, from stereotypical like 1950s movies. Um, 
so the art here is her kind of dressing in costume, but then also framing and taking the shots in a way that makes them really anxious. This one I love as an example because there's not there's not much to it in terms of like technical prowess, but the way she's composed the shot where she's like cut off the top of her head and crammed herself over in the margin of the frame and have this like frying pan handle coming right out on a diagonal that kind of goes right to her heart. It creates this really, really anxious image, like somebody's going to sneak up and grab her from behind, you know. So composition can be really, really, really important too. You know, how you put your subject in the frame um, really matters. So again, you know, that's a simple thing to do, but um, it makes a really big difference here too. This is this is one of Cindy Sherman's. And again, kind of the perspective is a little bit of an up angle going this way. And um, she's kind of put this figure sort of right between these two really tall buildings. So it feels like the balls are literally closing in on her. And it's just a very anxious kind of nightmarish um, photo. So, you know, you can do this. I have faith in all of you and you don't need Photoshop. You just need to pay attention to, you know, the basic elements and principles um, that you know and just use them. Uh, in the best way that you can to sort of tell a story. See, this looks like a scene right out of a movie, right? Some kind of domestic dispute here. Um, but again, it's all about how this image is composed that makes it so anxious and so kind of unreal feeling. Um, so again, just putting her right tightly there in that frame. So hopefully, um, hopefully this will help. Uh, again, if you have questions, let me know. Um, I'm happy to help, but um, it's all just going to be like working your idea out and then just really, really experimenting with ways of, um, of communicating it. All right. Thanks, guys.